I'm CK. Today we've got something I think is kind of fun. Uh, it's a simple digital clock. You may have seen one of these in the background of my workshop in California. Here in my workshop at an undisclosed location in Nevada, I don't have one yet. So I figured I'd get another one from KK Moon and put it together and let everyone see how it goes. I find this kit to be a really good kit for beginner to somewhat experienced in electronics. So looking forward to putting it together and demoing it for you. Let's take a look at what's in the kit. And as I said, this is a different workshop, so the lighting and layout is a little different. Uh, so I apologize if it throws you off a little bit. Little bag with the parts. A uh, QR code for something or other. Uh, let me see what this says. I assume it's for the instructions, more detailed instructions. Yeah, scan to view manual, print less, save the earth, which is always a good sentiment. Of course, they did put another piece of paper in here, single sheeter, uh, WHDTS six digit digital electronic clocks do it yourself kit. Uh, the circuit is mainly composed of a single chip circuit to uh, display circuit, keyboard input, signal ring circuit, and power circuit. So it gives you all the information about the circuitry involved. Uh, and some notes, pay attention to positive and negative terminals. Be sure uh, soldering pads don't peel off. And it's got a nice uh, component list. On the back side, it gives the pinouts of the main IC and a uh, schematic of how it drives the LED display and uh, how to operate it. And then installation steps. Number one, please be patient to install. In other words, take your time, enjoy yourself. And uh, again, I've, I've done one of these before. I find they're good kits. I think they're fun. And I think they're uh, good kits for young people, and that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. Let's pop open the bag. Nice little circuit board. LED segments, some diodes, a row of uh, transistors, switching transistors, buzzer, IC, bunch of resistors, Pretty much what you'd expect. Uh, if you look at the board, it's all labeled very well. Uh, all the components are clearly labeled with their values and more importantly for me, because some people don't do this as well as others, uh, polarity on the capacitors is noted very clearly. One thing they I, that I disagree with on them on is they use uh, the diode uh, LED diode symbol on the board without indicating uh, polarity. I know polarity is very clear from the diagram if you've done it a bunch. And again, I, I you know I harp on this. If you haven't done it a bunch, you're going to have to look up. Okay. Which, which one, the plate or the diamond, which one's negative, which one's positive. I would just prefer people to make it explicit on the boards. And on the back, uh, nothing too interesting. It's one thing that I like about this board. Uh, it's a single layer board and you can see all the traces very clearly. So if you are exploring electronics and you want to see what these transistors are doing, it's really easy to follow the signal path uh, from each component of the assembly. And that's just really nice. Also, uh, the solder pads are bright and shiny. Uh, 
there's no through hole plating, but you'll find, or I found, that th that doesn't matter that much in this board. Uh, it's branded E EQ kit. I don't know what that means. I have never seen another product from them, but that's okay. People come and go so quickly in the electronics business. Here are the three uh, number segments for the clock, and stuck into the side is a transistor. Oops, poor guy. And here we've got power, cable, or connector, wire, bunch of 1K resistors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And then, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So that's good. What else is in the bag? Some random other resistors. The IC that drives everything. It is. I don't know if you can see this. It's a Atmel 2009, uh, full number AT89C2051-24 PU, Papa Uniform. We also have some capacitors. Uh, power connector, as I mentioned before. Uh, a group of switches. There are three, three switches that go on the bottom of the board to set it, set the time, set functions. A uh, little buzzer. Socket for the IC. These buzzers have become really ubiquitous. They they show up everywhere. Timing crystal. A bunch of red LEDs that are going to be flashing. The resistors. I mean the rest of the transistors. Rest of the switches. I'm kind of looking here, saying, do I have enough? LEDs, because uh, I should have four. One, two, three, four. Yes, I do. So we're all ready to start going. Now I'm going to uh, scan this UPC with my iPad and see what we come up with. And it comes up in Safari. And it's the paper that we had. And the schematic comes up here color-coded, which is really nice. And the principal operation, operating specifications, installation steps, much more uh, thorough. I believe this one, yeah, this one. This is really nice. Uh, these guys, whoever designed this instructional product to go with it, really good. They have pictures of each step along the way. I mean, that's just really, really nice. And for, again, as I'm always saying, for a young person getting involved in this. And here's where you I did complain about what, uh, not marking the polarity directly on the board for the LEDs, but they do mark the polarity here in the online manual, so I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, this is just really awesome. You can... I mean, you're going to, as a young assembler, you're going to gain a lot of confidence because you have something you can just refer to constantly, saying each step of the way, did I do it right? Did I do it right? Did I do it right? Uh, so I really like this. And then uh, it's got a whole bunch of other chatter about this and that. So I'm going to set this over on the side so I can see it because, again, I like to go through the process exactly like uh, a young person would who's seeing this for the first time, even though, again, as I said, I've built one of these before. 
and I'm going to be building a couple more. Uh, they're handy to put around various places, various rooms. So, uh, one thing in my undisclosed, in my workshop, in my undisclosed location in Nevada, I'm not quite all set up yet, so uh, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put stuff. Circuit board holder in. Oops. As I say, I hate these circuit board holders. I have not found a better one. I wish I would. There needs to be something that uses lever locking instead of thumb screws, because with thumb screws, you don't have enough hands. To apply compression and to tighten the thumb screw. Again, uh, Panavice has one that's closer to what I like, but it's also big and huge and clunky. So uh, that's not a perfect solution either. going to make sure the focus is right on the camera. Hold one. First step is to take all the 1K resistors, put them in R2 through R15. So get ready for speed it up action. Okay, let's solder all these 1Ks in. Uh, and look, this is almost, this is a new Weller. Uh, it's only got a, I did one other project with it. Uh, but it's all clean. It's really interesting. You might have noticed uh, in the opening shot, uh, I also have, I finally bought a Heiko iron to see what that would be like, but I tried it and I'm still way too comfortable with the Weller. Uh, the wand just fits my hand better than the Heiko. I'm sure they're fine irons, obviously they are, but not for me. Uh, and way in the past, probably 37 years ago or so, Weller customer service treated me very well. And, you know, I, I remember it. Uh, treat your customers well, and you're gonna, they're gonna be as loyal to you as you are to them. And Weller was good to me, so I've never even, I mean, I try again. I, Gave that Heiko a full kit's worth of uh, test, but it just wasn't for me. Now we do two 2K resistors, R16 and R17. No, there's still, huh, there's still a resistor here. Not sure why we're not installing that. I come to think of it, I don't think there's a space. Oh, there it is. Oh, I know why. Okay, never mind. I know why they want to put the crystal in next. Crystal goes in next, and it is a, uh, 12 kilohertz crystal. I mean, I'm sorry, it's 12 megahertz. It's 12 megahertz crystal, which is pretty good accuracy for an inexpensive clock. And now, 
IC socket, so I'm going to solder up what I have and then do the IC socket. Because I, I don't want to leave that hanging. I want to solder that as, as soon as I put it on the board. Make sure the notch is at the right end. Obviously, it doesn't really matter as long as you remember which way you're putting the chip, uh, the chip in, but uh, you will be very sad if you make a mistake. So, I take my locking tweezers, put them down the middle of the IC socket like so, holds it in place. It's not holding it quite flush on that end, but I don't care, I'll do that. Push that end in just a little bit. Tack. Sorry for the discontinuity, I had to switch out my camera battery. Okay. Next step, install. This is uh, the one remaining res resistor that I mentioned, and uh, the reason why they left it for after the other resistors is this is installed as a stand-up, you know, a vertical resistor. Uh, typically that's done because uh, either for spacing reasons, which is probably not true on this board, though it could be, uh, but also for uh, thermal. Uh, it allows the, capacitor, uh, the resistor to radiate a little more heat. Now we should be putting the caps in now. So we got 100 microfarad, which is probably this little guy. Sure is. And again, I, I just love it because each component or group, if there are 14 of them, like there were the, for the 1K resistors, gets its own picture. It's easy to do nowadays. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything particular to generate a 20 page PDF versus a 5 page PDF. So Take pictures, publish them. We're going to get into the silicon components in a minute, so let me finish these. Okay, next is the voltage regulator. That's a 78L05. This one. Yep. Now I know from the other clock I built, this regulator gets kind of hot. So I'm actually going to give it a little bit of extra spacing over the board. Uh, doesn't necessarily make a huge amount of difference, but again, in operation, uh, this voltage regulator gets too hot to touch. So I want to give it a little bit more air around it. You can also fix that a little bit by adjusting the voltage, but we'll talk about that uh, when we get to operation. Okay, now we've got seven... Uh, S8550 transistors, so back to fast motion mode.
And there's all the transistors. Now we're going to put the display ICs on. We have some protective foam on, I mean protective foam. They have uh, protective uh, plastic on them. Now the key thing to remember here is you want the decimal points in the right place. And conveniently, again, because this is a good board, not only do they show you the place, the square to put it in, and the number grid, they also have the decimal points, so it's very hard to go wrong. I'm going to pull the plastic off, and these stay in place. They friction fit pretty well, so I'm not going to clamp it down. And this is kind of neat. I didn't notice this in the last one. Uh, you can see all the traces. Uh, they potted this with a clear material, clear silicone or whatever, so you can actually see the traces from the pins to various locations. That's kind of nice. And dang it, I have to unspool more solder. I almost made the whole kit with my first piece of solder. <clears throat> and one more component to solder on the board, the buzzer. Buzzers are polarized also, so you want to make sure you get the right polarity in the right place. Okay, so that's all the soldering. Let me clean off my soldering tip, park it, turn off the iron, trim that those buzzer leads. Bend the legs in a little bit. There's one leg that's a little Bend them in a little bit more. Okay. They're all in the right slots and firmly press. Did anything bend? Nothing bent. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, one, one more thing. Take the... Oops, I'm going to heat the soldering iron back up too because I forgot about this. Sorry. Uh, this is the power leads. I'm going to strip the ends. Strip the ends and tin them. Click that into place. And there you go. You got a clock. I'm all 
all the mechanical assembly and soldering is done. Took less than an hour. So do we want to power it up tonight? Let's see what time it is. Yeah. We'll go ahead and power it up. Gosh, come on. Let's see. Yeah. That's the end of the instructions, and we're going to use the uh, little power supply that I I love these little power supplies, and I built this a uh, week or two ago and posted it, so you can find that. Did I post that? I think I did. First, I have to remember what the voltage is on this. Five volt. So it's five volts in. So on our little bench top power supply, I'm going to crank that down to uh, 4.96 volts. Now we do traditional smoke test. Ta-da! Lights up. Let me turn off the overhead light. And there you go. Clock's ready. Uh, less than an hour. A good clean kit. Uh, I highly recommend this. Uh, obviously there's a couple of settings you can do. Uh, set the time. Uh, it also does uh, an alarm clock and it's got a countdown timer. So it's a very good kit. I highly recommend this for young folks or people starting out. Uh, I'll post a link uh, to where you can buy this in the description, and thanks for watching.